Hey everybody, welcome to Always Bored, Never Boring. Today I'm going to be painting some of the terrain from Masters of the Universe Battleground. I think terrain is an essential part of any tabletop game, but I do get a bit bored painting lots of it. So I'm going to be painting the terrain from this set first, so I can treat myself to painting all the character miniatures afterwards as a reward. And as I paint this stuff, I'm keeping two things in mind. One, I want to be able to do it as quickly and easily as possible. Two, I want it to look as much as possible like the officially painted miniatures as seen on the box cover for the game and inside the rules book. To start with, I have spray undercoated the miniatures on the frame with black. And then I have my trusty side cutters here and I'm going to remove the components from the frame. Once I have removed them, there will be nubs. Those get sanded down or shaved off with a craft knife. And then we are left with this sort of situation where you can see where it has been clipped from the sprue. Of course, we then need to touch up all of that paintwork using a little bit of black straight from the pot, just dabbing it on anywhere where there was a nub. And if you notice anywhere where you missed with the spray primer, you can just fill that in as well. But we're not being too fussy, we're just working our way around it quickly. And then once it is dry, we can start the painting proper. I have a section of the wall here and we're beginning with Mechanica's standard grey and we're doing an overbrush here which is a bit like a dry brush but you have more paint on the brush. You are still whipping the brush over the surface of the miniature so you're not getting paint in all of the recesses but you are fully coating all of the most raised surfaces and this is a really good way to quickly and easily paint large textured surfaces like these walls. You will notice I'm only doing this on the walls. The bases of these miniatures will get done in a different color later on. My idea as I am painting this stuff is to try and make it look a little bit cartoony. I want it to look almost like it could have come out of a toy set or maybe even be lifted from one of the filmation cartoons. That means I want it all to be quite bright and fun. But before I brighten it up too much, I'm going to use some Nuln Oil in the recesses. This is an optional step, really, you don't have to do it, but I'm just going to work around all of the recesses, just painting in some Nuln Oil, and this will darken up those recesses and neaten them up a bit if any of the paint from the overbrushing has gone into the recesses by accident. It's by no means essential, but I do think it looks slightly better at the end. The downside, of course, being you are adding an additional step to the painting process, and it is, whilst not the most time-consuming thing, not the quickest thing either. Once that's dry, we're going to use the Wolf Grey to do a heavy dry brush over the whole section of the wall. And the official painted wall sections have more of a turquoisey sort of look, but Wolf Grey is a nice bluish grey that I really like, and it's going to work well for me. I'm going to be happy with that as a colour, rather than that turquoise. It's close enough. Once that's dry, we are going to do a dry brush of Ulthuan Grey. I guess this is another optional step, you don't really have to do it, but hitting the edges of the walls with that Ulthuan Grey will just help to raise all those details. And each layer of dry brushing just brightens up the whole thing even more, which plays into that idea of I want everything to look bright and bold. With that done, we can move on to the bases. I'm going to neaten up the bases with Abaddon Black, and then I'm going to do an overbrush with Steel Legion Drab. So this is pretty much the same process we did on the walls, but we're using brown coloration instead. We are using a smaller brush this time because we don't want to go over the wall section that we have already painted. If we go over a little bit, that's not the end of the world. It can just be dirt on the wall, and we will do some blending later on that will try and tie the two sections of the miniature together anyway. When that's dry, we're going to use some Seraphim Sepia, and again, I would say this is an optional step. In this test model, I actually paint the Seraphim Sepia over the whole base, my idea being to enrich the browns and also give some additional recess shading. But in all of the other miniatures I painted, I only painted the Seraphim Sepia around the rocks and where the rocks touched the sand base, and I think that was a slightly better result in the end. Slap it all over, use it just in the recesses, or don't use it at all, it's up to you. But when that's dry, we're moving on to Zandri Dust, and we are now going to do a dry brush rather than an overbrush, and we're going to try and bring out all the textures of the sand and the rocks. I am using a dry brush here that has really hard bristles. I don't really like this dry brush, and after doing this test model, I did switch to a dry brush with much softer bristles, and I got a much nicer result. I got a much smoother, dustier result, which looks more in keeping with the desert theme. Regardless, dry brush all around those bases, and then when that is dry, we're going to do a dry brush on just the sand areas with desert yellow. I am really happy with how this turned out. I thought it ended up looking very sandy. It looked very much like a desert, but 
ultimately I felt it wasn't quite bright and bold enough for that cartoony style I was trying to go for, so I do end up dry brushing the sand with another colour later on. I've left this in here just to show you how the slightly more natural realistic sand colour looks, because for some people this may be their preferred option. It doesn't matter if you get a bit of it on the stone, we're not being too fussy with any of this dry brushing really. Next is Screaming Skull and we need to do a really targeted dry brush on just the rocks. Again, I'm using that brush with the hard bristles here and I got a very scratchy end result that I didn't like very much and that is ultimately why I changed to a dry brush with the softer bristles. And now I'm going on to Agrax Earthshade and again I would say this is an optional step but I'm going to paint in Agrax Earthshade just at the point where the rocks touch the walls. This is going to help blend the colours a little bit, it's going to help conceal anywhere where your dry brushing may have hit the other surface that it wasn't supposed to. And it's also going to give the sense of dirt and the accumulation of grime around the base of the wall where those rocks are. But this is what we have at this stage and this is pretty much the complete basic wall section. That is the stone and the sandy rocky base. So I will paint all of the wall terrain elements with this technique. And in fact not just the walls, they have these little areas of rough terrain here with the rock pillars and everything. Those are all painted using the exact same techniques. The pillars are painted like the walls, the sand and the rocks on the base are painted like the sand and rocks on the base of the wall sections. It's all the same process. But as I mentioned before, while I did like this sand colour, I don't think it quite met the aesthetic I was going for with this set. So I grabbed some Avalon Sunset, this is a very yellow yellow, and I just did another dry brush. Here I have switched to my softer dry brush, and I'm just going to work all the way around that sand area, just to yellow up the sand a little bit more. I think it looks a little bit closer to the coloration of the board for the Masters of the Universe Battleground game, and also has that slightly more cartoony style. Ultimately, I was much happier with it. Go with whichever style you think is best for you. And that covers the basic painting process for the walls, but many of the walls have additional little details on them. You can see we've got some little plinths here, we've got some manacles hanging from the wall, and we have these thorny vines. For small details like this, what I would normally do using a traditional method trying to get things done quickly, I would put down a base coat, then a wash, and then a highlight. But really, little details like this were made for speed paints. They've already been pre-highlighted with our dry brushing. We have that nice light Ulthuan Grey dry brush over the top, so we could just apply some Army Painter speed paint directly over those areas and it will instantly colorize them. And that is what we're going to do, starting with dark brown for the vines. Painting in all of the little thorns and just trying not to spill over any of the stonework. I could have gone with a green or something for this, but I thought brown was a better option. Again, that's a personal choice, go with what you want. And of course you could do this with traditional painting methods, you could paint this with wood, then you could do a little wash on it with Agrax Earthshade or something, then do a dry brush over the top with a lighter wood colour. But using the Army Painter Speed Paints just means I can apply one coat and be done with this area of the miniature. And we can move on to the lintels using hardened leather. And again, it is just one quick application of the Army Painter Speed Paints on those lintels and we are done. Incredibly quick, incredibly easy. And that is exactly what we're going for. And this is one of the reasons why speed paints will stay in my collection, even though I will probably not be using them to paint whole box sets in the future. As for these manacles, I have decided that for the Masters of the Universe Battleground game, I will not be using any metallic paints. But also, I'm not going to try and do non-metallic metal painting either, because I'm not a good enough painter. I want this to look cartoony and nothing in the toy range ever had a really strong metallic look to it. So I'm just going to use the Gravelord Grey from Army Painter Speed Paint. I'm just going to apply a single coat of that over the metal areas and this will go over the manacles but it will also go over any other metal areas like there are some little grates, there are some grills in the wall, little bits of pipe work, anything like that, anything that I think should be metallic, it will just get Gravelord Grey. And there's even some little skulls on the base here, and you could leave those. They have already had a dry brush of Screaming Skull over the top of them, so they already have a bony colour. But just to make them stand out a little bit more, and to give some good recess shading for the eye sockets and the teeth, we are going to use Army Painter Pallid Bone, just to very carefully pick out those skulls. There's not too many of them, this isn't a Games Workshop product, but there are a few dotted around the place. 
And yes, it's not really a necessary step, but I think it's worth it just to make them stand out just that little bit more. And of course, pallid bone works really well over bony colours anyway. But I'm not just going to use Army Painter speed paints on these little details. We have this tattered curtain here. I'm going to use Mephiston Red on this. Mephiston Red is a brilliant paint. It is a wonder, really, because I remember back in the day when trying to paint red over black was a fool's errand. It was an absolute nightmare. But Mephiston Red, it goes over anything, and you really get good coverage, even from a single coat. So I have thinned the paint ever so slightly, and I'm just going to paint all of the curtain with the red. And it really does look good. Mephiston Red is such a nice, rich, vibrant red colour. One of my favourite Citadel paints, I would say. And once that coat has completely dried, I'm going to use Red Tone from Army Painter, and I'm going to paint this over the whole curtain. This is going to do two things. It's going to enrich the red even more, but it's also going to provide recessed shading. And I'm not being too fussy about it, I'm just painting it all over the whole curtain. The curtain rail, by the way, if you are interested, was just a coat of hardened leather from Army Painter Speed Paint over the Ulthru and Grey dry brush, and then Gravelord Grey just for the end caps. Finally, I'm going back with Mephiston Red, and I'm going to thin the Mephiston Red down, and I'm just going to apply it as a highlight. I could use a different coat. I could also do additional coats on top. I could add something like Evil Sun Scarlet to the Mephiston Red and gradually build up layers of brightening red colour, but... I don't really feel the need to. I think after doing the Mephiston Red highlight, this is good enough. I think it looks bright and bold, it looks like it could have come out of the cartoon, and it also looks good enough for the tabletop without me having to put in huge amounts of effort. Remember, I don't enjoy painting terrain too much. I just want it to look good on the tabletop. And here is a small selection of the finished articles. And I'm pretty happy with that. I think I have to a certain extent captured the style of the officially painted miniatures as seen on the box cover for the game, but at the same time I've managed to use techniques that are quick and easy to do. Of course I haven't shown you in this video how to do every single part of the terrain, there are certain bits of terrain that have little computer screens and things like that, but it's all the same process. I'm either going to hit those elements with a single coat of an army painter speed paint, or I'm going to do the 1-2-3 layering method, that is, base coat, wash, highlight. And I think that will about do it for this video. I hope you found it interesting. If you have liked the video, please consider pressing the like button. If you really like the video, please consider subscribing if you don't already do so. And hopefully, I will see you all again very soon. Bye-bye, everyone. Bye-bye.